From the LUTV Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, California, this is Brief News Brief, a brief look at today's trending news topics. Proudly combating the thought police since 2016, here's your host, James Heaney. I'm James Heaney, and this is your Brief News Briefing. Weapons of Mass Casualty. Sunday night, the biggest mass shooting in modern American history occurred, and I keep hearing that, but what I gotta ask afterwards is, okay, well then when in ancient American history was there a bigger mass shooting? Are you talking about the Civil War? Is the Civil War a mass shooting? I'm digressing, okay? Well, it was, I'm gonna call it right here with no research, the biggest mass shooting in American history. And it occurred when a 64-year-old one percenter with dozens of assault weapons shot up a crowd of people enjoying a country music concert at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Investigators are struggling with why this man did this. 59 people are dead, 527 people are injured. Paddock purchased these weapons legally over a period of years from local stores near his home, from major retailers. At least one of his guns fired as if it were a fully automatic weapon, which was done by the legal help of a modification allowing him to just push one button and spray bullets. It's called a bump stop. Uh, Let me show a quick clip of what a bump stop can do for you. Americans are left to wonder, why the fuck do we let people get away with owning these weapons? Is this a hunting thing? I think that you're not going to be able to eat any deer with that much lead inside of it. All right. Most of the guns, America has more guns per person than anywhere else in the world. It's got 89 per 100 people. Isn't that crazy? And then to even bring this up now, people are like, oh, we can't talk about gun control now because I'm grieving. Fuck you. Fuck you. Unless you actually know somebody there, I don't want to hear you say you're grieving because it's every time, every time there's a mass shooting, we talk about how it's not the right time to talk about it. You know what? What if after September 11th we were like, it's not the right time to stop, uh, to start searching people at airports. We would have had things happen afterwards. It is the right time. This is the violence. And on top of that, the hypocrisy, hypocritism. Like after, wasn't it after the Paris thing when the truck hit that crowd of people that immediately afterwards Trump was like, this is why we want the travel ban? I mean, We need to do something, because this is fucking crazy. The Trump administration expelled 15 Cuban diplomats from the embassy in Washington in an escalating response to a mysterious illness afflicting American embassy personnel in Havana. The actions are in retaliation for a worrisome series of illnesses I just spoke about that have been affecting American diplomats. The illnesses may have resulted from some sort of subsonic attack that the U.S. is unable to duplicate. Some people in Cuba appear to have supersonic weapon that we don't understand and they have used it against our diplomats. Now there's a lot of guessing going on in the scientific community and I figured I'd throw mine out there. I think maybe, just maybe, They're playing Nickelback albums just super softly. You can't notice it, but if you're sleeping and there's this Nickelback album on shuffle, repeat, and loop, it's going to break your brain. So far, I hear that there's 22 injured. For some, the injuries appear to be permanent with symptoms including hearing loss, dizziness, tinnitus, balance and visual problems, headache, fatigue, cognitive issues, and difficulty sleeping, which, come to think of it, there's at least a small chance they're all on one of the many pharmaceutical things that I hear advertised to myself every night. Trump visited Puerto Rico today following the devastation in the area due to Hurricane Maria. I bet you know how that went. Well, he offered some supportive words such as, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack because we spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We saved a lot of lives. He insisted everybody should be proud of the death toll only reaching 16 people, and I've got to answer to that. God, please make it only 16 people. But from the way things are looking, you might not think that the following deaths are going to be from the hurricane, but God, I'm almost feeling like I'm jinxing it saying it. But we're not out of the water yet, and we shouldn't be doing a victory dance and how great we're doing only having 16 people dying. Marcus Zahn, 
of Germany returned to his $366,000 bright orange McLaren Spider, parked by a pack of donkeys to find the bite marks on his car. The owner of the donkeys heaved and hawed stubbornly and refused to burrow into his pocket and pay the $6,845 repair bill. So, after mulling it over, Marcus sued and won. Apparently, the cretinous creature chopped the costly colored car, conjecturing it was a carrot. What an ass! We can only pray that this doesn't happen to someone else. Gerrymandering is being argued in the Supreme Court this week, which could have rippling effects across how districts are drawn in this country. And those districts determine how representatives are elected. And that's how a president's made. Gerrymandering, if you're not familiar, is where the party in power draws voting districts to give itself a lopsided advantage, you know, in elections. But after spirited arguments on Tuesday, there's reason to think that the swing vote Justice Kennedy might be ready to join the court's more liberal members in a groundbreaking decision that could reshape American de democracy by letting courts determine when lawmakers have gone too far. There is this apparent consensus among the justices that voting maps drawn by politicians to give advantage to their parties is uh, unattractive, and it doesn't uh, feature the best parts of American democracy. But the justices appeared split about whether the court could actually find a standard for determining when the practice was unconstitutional or not. Did someone say email scandal? White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said last week that all White House personnel have been instructed to use official email to conduct all government-related work and to forward work-related communication on personal accounts to their official account. But are they doing that? Reports have revealed that Kushner, Ivanka Trump, former White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, and former strategist strategist, strategist, Steve Bannon, exchanged emails with White House officials using their private accounts. Oh boy, who'd have guessed there'd be some hypocrisy? Mayday, we are in trouble. Everybody has said it's amazing the job that we've done in Puerto Rico. We're very proud of it. The relief effort is under control. It, it, it is really a good news story. Damn it, this is not a good news story. I am mad as hell. Life here is very, very hard. It is bad. The truckers just can't give you. They tell us, you know what? We have nothing to give you. Everyone knows our power grid is down. Whatever it needs to be done, you do it. Because when it comes to saving lives, we are all part of one community of shared values. There are lines everywhere you see lines to get gas, lines to get food, lines to get water, lines to get cash. 